Go for it. All right. I'm Kyle Johnson, and I did Chapter 8, Collegiate Sports. I'm a sport. All right. Uh, there's a lot of history on collegiate sports. Uh, first intercollegiate athletic event in the U.S. was August 3rd, 1852, and it was a crew race between Harvard and Yale, which is, like, growing. And uh, baseball was the first major sport to hold intercollegiate athletic events, first being in 1859 between Amherst and Williams. And that's, Williams is a Division III college today. And Amherst, the score uh, was Amherst 73 to 32, which I thought was pretty interesting. And uh, football was next in 1869 between Rutgers and Princeton. And football was the real like moving sport with uh, NTA and everything. And uh, these events were student ran, and the Ivy League was considered the powerhouse of collegiate athletics back then. Okay, uh, some more history. Uh, in 1876, the Intercollegiate Football Association was created, made up of Harvard, Yale, Princeton, Columbia, which are all Ivy League schools. And uh, in 1895, the Big Ten was formed to create student eligibility rules for athletics, not necessarily like the conference yet, because most of the schools were not instituted at that time. Uh, in 1912, the NCAA was formed to make football safer and more exciting. And the sport of football is great for the structure of collegiate athletics today. Uh, more history. Uh, Carnegie reports in 1929 was uh, looked for academic and recruiting abuses among universities like today. But back then, it wasn't that as wasn't as bad as today. And uh, NCA changed to an organization that oversees rules and regulation among universities from before they were just rules and safety, but now there's regulations. Uh, Knight Commission in 1991 is the most recent. Uh, they passed legislation to alleviate improper activities in intercollegiate athletics, such as boosters and giving amateur athletes money and all that we heard about. All right, uh, they also talked about women in chapter. Uh, the first women's intercollegiate sport contest was a basketball game between University of California Berkeley and Stanford in 1896. And, uh, physical educators at the time believed that all women should experience the joy of sport like men. This idea sparked the interest in women collegiate athletics among many universities. And the Association for Intercollegiate Athletics for Women, or AIAW, was created in 1971. And more history. Uh, NCA is the primary rulemaking body today for intercollegiate athletics. And other organization, organizations like the NCA are the NAIA National Association of Intercollegiate Athletics and the NG, NJCAA National Junior College Athletic Association. Yeah. Uh, the industry format. Uh, the NCA is a voluntary uh, association with more than 1,200 institutions, conferences, organizations, and individual members. And there are three divisions within the association, which is uh, Division One is the big powerhouse schools like Ohio State, Alabama, with all the money, and they have 335 institutions. Division Two are the smaller schools, 288, and Division Three, smaller schools, uh, 430, 432. And the basic purpose of the NCAA like what they base everything off of is uh, to maintain intercollegiate athletics as an integral part of the educational program and the athlete as an integral part of the student body. And by so doing, retain a clear line between intercollegiate athletics and professional sports. And that last line is like the whole why they like form the NCAA. It's kind of blurry, but it's just like an outline of the structure of the NCAA. So they have the executive committee, to, like all the responsibilities, like approve, like they approve everything, and then the members are eight FBS members from Division One, and they have two members from Division Two, and they have none from Division Three. Executive, and then just trickles down Division Two and Division Three councils, and then the Legislative Council is the lowest. They make responsibilities and rules for the and how to govern the division. Okay, a uh, challenging issue uh, that we face the NCA is that many of the institutions bend to break many of the policies, so, such as paying players or paying their families to decide to come here. And uh, today the issue is should collegiate athletes get paid, and there's such 
is licensing issues that companies are making millions of dollars off these athletes and they're not getting a cent. And amateur status is a big issue too with uh, NCAA you have to remain amateur until you go pro or you can't uh, compete in school. Uh, career implications, uh, I'm not sure what I want to do with sports yet, but I just have a basic outline of what you would need to be in the NCAA to work for collegiate athletics. And in order to be su successful, uh, you have to know the system very well. There's so many rules and all that. And to work for the NCAA, a law degree would be very helpful with all the policies. And marketing and business skills are needed to advance the brand of NCAA and the universities. And the use of technology is very important for today and the